Okay, so I want to make a video on cold water extraction. I've seen lots of videos, and when I first started having to do this, um, I noticed that, yeah, there were lots of videos out there, um, there's lots of information uh, on forums, but nothing really showed me a way that I felt was completely safe, um, gave you a definite amount when you were finished. Um, a lot of the ways that you'll see Really, you don't know what you're taking at the end. Um, a, a lot of people claim to, to tell you exactly what you're taking, but really, if you actually tested it, I'm pretty sure that you would, you'd be way, way off what, what you think is in the solution. So what I'm trying to do is, is find a way, or show you a way, that you can end up with this. So I know that this in this is coding, and there are 50, for every 50 millilitres, there's 100 milligrams of coding. Uh, this is a guaranteed amount. It, it's 100% it's accurate. Um, and this, this also takes into account the amount that you lose. Because you, you don't get 100% yield, you actually lose about 20%. Um, and, and that 20% I've tried and tested many times, and it's a definite sort of 20% that you're going to be losing. Um, so as you can see, it's very clear, there's nothing, nothing in there, no bits, um, I keep it chilled so you can see that a lot of what you can actually see is, is from the fridge condensation. Okay, so first of all what you're going to need is some water. Now, I use a shot glass that's measured um, purely because I find that it's actually the most accurate that I could find. Um, maybe I kitchen craft this one. Um, the science lab ones there is something I, I, I thought of using, but actually I measure my uh, doses out using this. So I find it's best to put it in with the same thing that you're taking it out with because there's there seems to be a tolerance um, with everything that I've used. Uh, I mean, this is actually so far out that when I'm finished I, I'm actually 40 milliliters off a true measure. Um, even though it's made by Pyrex and they're supposed to be accurate, it, it's really not. So use, I use that. I have a couple of different jugs, you'll see why. Um, a couple of plant glasses, any glass uh, will do. Um, you can use, or you can adapt this, come up with your own ways of doing it, this is just how I do it. Um, I use a couple of glasses purely because it speeds the filtration process up. And filter paper. Now, this is coffee filter paper. It worked perfectly fine. And this is what I've been using. I actually use two. I double them up, I fold them one way and one the other way. Um, and I find that filters extremely well. That's what filtered this. However, I have just ordered some of these. These are proper science lab filters. These are supposed to be a lot better, but I haven't actually used them yet. This is going to be the first time. So maybe it's worth a worthwhile investment. Uh, I think they, they cost me it cost me about eight pounds, something like that. Um, so what's that? Uh, Twelve dollars, thirteen dollars, something like that. Um, and there's a hundred in there. So maybe maybe a worthwhile investment if you're going to be doing it a lot. Uh, and then of course, packets of cold Um You can use cold water extraction for all sorts of different things. It doesn't have to be cold I just use cold It can be um, all, all sorts of different opiates, um, opioids, uh, and many other things. To be honest, in the UK. The thing you're going to come across the most is cocodamol. I've seen uh, most of the videos that you see of, of other things being extracted. They actually tend to be from the US. So start off by removing all of them into this. It's worth noting while I'm doing this that I don't crush them. I know a lot of people do crush them to try and get them to dissolve quicker. I've found that there's actually a, no merit in crushing them. Um, as far as speed goes, you're really not saving a lot of time. The other thing is, you're already losing 20%. 
Um, if you're losing 20% of your yield anyway, why on earth would you want to crush them up, have bits of powder going everywhere, and, and lose potentially another 10%? I don't see the point. Um, so what I do instead to get them to dissolve is use ever so slightly lukewarm water, and I mean lukewarm water. Codeine uh, will be ineffective if you get it too hot. You will just burn it off. Now I'm no scientist, so forgive my lack of technical terms, but the codeine will be useless if you, if you get it too hot. Okay, so we have all of our tablets crushed up. Now make sure you work out exactly how much codeine you've got before you even start. Um, so I've got, these are 32 tablets. Uh, they are 800, uh, 8 milligrams and 500 milligrams of paracetamol. So I know that between my two packets here I have 512 milligrams. You're going to lose a little bit. Um, it's not the most accurate thing in the world. Um, so I work based on 500 milligrams in this case. So a lot of people will, uh, at this point, make it up to an amount in the glass, in the in the, the measuring cup, um, or they'll put the amount in first. Uh, it, it it's a very dangerous way of doing it. You don't know how much you're getting in there. Um, you have to discount the amount of paracetamol that you have in there. So first off, to do that, what I do is put. The, uh, put, put the tablets in there first, then I take my measuring cup, check this is at the right temperature, it's a little bit warm, okay so I'm just going to add a bit more water to this, that's about right, now it really doesn't want to be too warm, I can't stress that enough, you, you don't want to do all this and find that you've actually burnt all your codeine off, so For this, I what I do is take it to I, I do it to as I've already shown uh, two milligrams to one milliliter of water. So in this case, uh, 500 milligrams of codeine. I actually want to be putting 250 milliliters of water in. I do that basically because it's it's an amount that, that is a safe amount to take. Uh, you don't want it too strong because then measuring it out if you if you're trying to measure out 10 milligrams and uh, 10 milliliters and that 10 milliliters contains 100 milligrams of codeine <clears throat> you could quite easily double your dose and you don't even know you've done it uh, so it needs to be an amount that, that you you can measure accurately so I want five of these Now just to show you how inaccurate these actually are. Now that's claiming that there's over 300 in there. Now I know you've taken into consideration that there is some paracetamol in there, but I know that the paracetamol doesn't take it quite up to that. And I actually know that this is around 30 to 40 off. Um, so then, it's lots of stirring. Now, the other reason that I don't like to crush them is what I actually find is when you crush them and you put them in there uh, as it's dissolving because you crushed it in such fine parts it's very difficult to actually tell when it's fully dissolved so you think it's completely dissolved and actually there's still lots of little bits that aren't dissolved still floating around in there you then put that in the freezer um, it starts to, to solidify it's not gotten the chance to dissolve um, when you do it like this, and I'd advise that you don't actually go crushing the spoon against the side or anything. Let it do its thing. Um, it does take a little while, but it's it's more than worth it doing it this way. You know it's dissolved then. You know 100% that every bit of what you put in there is gone. Um, rather than having little bits just float around, not dissolved at all. I'd expect it to take around 15 minutes uh, to completely dissolve. And do ensure it's completely dissolved before you go to the next stage. What we're looking for, once it's completely dissolved, is absolutely no lumps, no bits. The one thing that is worth noting is, uh, a lot of people say sort of half an hour in the freezer. Um, 
Uh, and the aim of this is uh, to try and solidify the paracetamol so it can't fall through the filter. Half an hour doesn't seem to be enough. Um, and, and I've noticed the same thing when people are pouring it through the filter. Um, it, it doesn't, it seems to fall, come straight out when you're pouring it out. And it should be a very separate layer. It should be, um, it should be quite dense. It shouldn't move um, from the bottom of the jug. It, you should be able to just pour the, the liquid off. If you aren't able to do that, put it back in the freezer. The last thing you want is for paracetamol to fall straight through the filter, then you consume it and you end up in hospital. So when you're putting it in the freezer, you must be able to take it out without knocking, shaking it at all. Um, so don't, don't put it in a drawer that you're going to have to tug on uh, to take it back out again. And place it very gently in there. Close it very gently. It really is important to make sure you can take that back out again without shaking it up. Because uh, it really will ruin your whole filtration process. So at this stage it's been around 50 minutes. Um, so you want to be getting your filters ready. The reason you needed to get your filters ready so early is because the whole point of putting it in the freezer is to solidify the paracetamol. Um, if you leave it out too long it's just going to start turning back into a powder and you risk it falling through your filter. So you actually want to get this done as quick as possible. So with the coffee filter papers I use two and I put them in like that and the reason for that is that it stops them splitting so much if you've got these ones that join at the side not an issue if you haven't um, and you want to wet these down if you don't wet them down what's going to happen is all your coating is just going to soak straight up into into your filter paper which is not what you want okay so I've wet these down all I do is just put, pop them in like that and then gently being careful not to break the seams fold it over. You can use an elastic band, um, I don't really find that I have to. Now as for my proper filter paper, I've had a little play and I'm not convinced. It, it could be fantastic um, but I think what I'm going to do is just pour a little bit in for now um, until I get a funnel um, and I can use it properly. Just, just give it a little go. Um, today what I think I'm really going to be using is mainly these. So I just need to set another one of those up. And then what I tend to do is just take another any old glass, take a single sheet What this one's for is the sludgy stuff at the bottom because we, we, we're going to try and pour off all of the liquid from the top leaving the sludge at the bottom but of course the sludge still contains some of your coating so what this does is um, you can leave this in the fridge um, for an hour, a couple of hours and just let it slowly drain through um, the amount of paracetamol that will actually come through from it, it being uh, from warming up at this stage, um, that you're talking such a tiny amount, it's, it's, it's actually insignificant. Um, and and the, the reason for the single filter is I'm actually going to double filter it. So what I, or what I tend to do is let it all drain through, then when with the stuff that I'm left with, I put that back in the freezer, let it cool down to the right temperature and then filter it again. So I didn't show it coming out of the freezer because uh, it, it takes time to set the camera up um, and actually I want to get this done as quick as possible. Now, you might be able to tell it, it's frozen the tiniest little bit on top. There's, there's, there's conflicting advice on this. Uh, some people say don't let it freeze at all. Other people say they take it right to the point of, of where it's actually about to completely freeze. Um, I've never actually found it making a difference. Now this is from, from years of, of taking it um, and honestly they, it doesn't seem to affect it. I wouldn't necessarily freeze it right down but taking it right to the point where you're just starting to get a little layer of frozen on top that's not going to be a bad thing. That's going to guarantee that the stuff on the bottom is completely solidified. What you want to do is pour it off making sure that that stuff on the bottom stays where it is. 
So hopefully this should filter perfectly fine. So I'll pour some into my experimental filter and just let that sit. Now I can tell you to put it in for a certain amount of time. Um, the reality is this, this doesn't seem to be any real rhyme or reason to it. Sometimes it hasn't been in long enough. It can look like it, it can feel like it's been in there plenty long enough, it's plenty cold enough and actually you're still getting bits come through. Now what that looks like is um, as it hits the water, so each drip hits the water, you'll see the paracetamol spiral through it and just, just uh, you'll, you'll, see, you'll see it hit the water each time. You'll definitely know there's paracetamol in there. Um, so what you should be seeing is absolutely no paracetamol as it's hitting the thing. You should literally be able to just see it coming through perfectly. Now, when we say, and I'm sure you, anyone watching this has read something else somewhere, when we say uh, never drink a cloudy solution, what that means is we, uh, cloudy. Now, once you've done it a few times, it really means cloudy, and you'll get to know what that means by cloudy. A tiny little bit of white, what that actually is, is the, 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 the binding agent for the tablet. Um, uh, other bits of chemicals. It's not actually the paracetamol, so a tiny bit of cloudy solution isn't a problem. So what you'll actually see is with this, this is actually the tiniest little bit cloudy. That is what is considered clear. Anything more than this is cloudy. You can go a tiny little bit more cloudy than this, and that, that depends on the brand of tablets, but this is what it should look like. You want to get this out of here as quick as possible and filtering. Like I say, keep the sludge on the bottom. You want to filter the sludge separately. You don't want the sludge going into here because it won't filter quick enough. And the absolute bonus with filtering and doing this whole process in this way means that you've already pre-measured. So there's no going, oh okay, so now I've got this much and I know that there should be five doses in there. So let's sit there, and I, this is what I used to do originally, this is, this is the advice that you're given, is to then start getting out five glasses and evenly matching them up between the glasses, trying to measure out five doses. You have no idea how much you've lost, you have no idea how much is actually in there, you're just roughly measuring out the doses. The bonus with this is you know what your ratio already is, so you can actually pull this out halfway through filtering and get a dose. Um, you can pour it out any time and you know that when you measure up to 50 millilitres on that measure, it's going to be 100 milligrams. Okay, so I'm just starting to get the sludge come through now. So as you can see, I've got the sludgy stuff on the bottom still. So I want to filter these completely separately away from everything else. And then we take our single one and then just crudely pour it in. You want all of that sludge on the bottom. Now don't go shaking it or anything because what you'll actually find is that all of your real gloopy sludge comes out. All your liquid comes off. And what you're left in the bottom with is thick, horrible paracetamol. And that is what it should look like on the bottom. And you'll notice that I've managed to keep that horrible gloopy stuff completely separate from even the slightly gloopy liquid here and this stuff here now this particular brand of tablets it looks quite milky other brands I find actually you could almost drink it straight away I, would, I wouldn't advise doing it but you could almost drink it straight away without even filtering it just by separating it out with the cold water extraction so I'll let those filter and uh, come back in a second Okay, so to show you the uh, the benefits of, of all that preparation, all that measuring and making sure that 
that you've got the right amount where you want it. Um, I'm now halfway through filtering. Now, using the vast majority of people's methods, um, I would have to wait till I'm finished and then start measuring them out, or just take a punt, um, which is, it, it would appear is what most people do. Um, I think the vast majority of people that want a set amount seem to be um, taking the amount of tablets they want and just extracting them. That's, that's great if you want one dose. Um, so what I can do now is I know the exact amount that's in there. So I can actually, halfway through filtering, and this is also, you'll see why I uh, needed quite so many jugs. So halfway through filtering I can take this out. I can pour that in there. Oh, um, by the way, this stuff, these these filter papers, yes, it's definitely marginally clearer. Um, but I'm I'm not seeing a great deal of benefit. It's very slow. It's it's actually a lot slower than the filter paper, the coffee filter paper, which is not what I expected. Um, and to be perfectly honest, this is plenty clear enough. Um, I can't, I can't honestly see a great deal of benefit. Um, that's the, there's bits in there, which is from the kettle, I believe. That's actually plenty clear enough. Um, <coughs> it's completely safe, so I, I can't really see a great deal of benefit. But you know, some people might like it. Um, so from this, I, I can actually take my measure. I'm going to take my 50 milliliter measure, my 100 milligrams dose. Oh, look at that spot. I'm going to take my 100 milligram dose. And then I can bore it straight. Into the bottle. I don't need to wait. I know how much is in there. And this is how you can also find this is how you find out that there's 20% missing. Because obviously I know I put 250 milliliters in. Um, and I know then from that I can work out exactly how much liquid is missing. Um, I uh, that's going to be into the filter paper. Um, some's gonna go with the sludge, you can try and filter that out, you can try and recover as much as you want. About 20% loss is about right. Um, and I know exactly, I know exactly how much I've lost every single time. And there you go. That is a completely filtered, perfect, clear, safe solution. And exactly the right concentrate. And to compare that to the other one that I had. You can see that by the uh, chilling, which is frosted up a little bit, they are identical every time. You have a completely and utterly identical, guaranteed way of getting the same solution every single time. Now I can't think of a safer way of doing this, to be perfectly honest. I, I, I don't go out there doing the crazy things that I've seen people doing, just trying to get it to go quick. If you want quick, this isn't the video for you. This isn't the method for you. If you want to do batches and, and you don't want to end up in a hospital, you don't want to have that horrible feeling which everyone's gone through when they take coding of, oh God, have I just taken too much. The other thing that it is that putting in these bottles means that there's only ever a 100 milligram dose in there. So, should someone drink this, God forbid, they aren't going to die. Um, as for dosing, 100 milligrams with no tolerance whatsoever, 100 milligrams is your upper limit. Um, so, yes, you could take slightly more, you could go to 150 milligrams, don't. Just, just don't, it's not worth it. To be perfectly honest, all you're going to do is you're going to start getting the side effects that you don't want. So 100 milligrams um, is your absolute upper limit. So if you have no tolerance, um, and you will gain tolerance as you take it, and tolerance will disappear within days of not taking it. Um, so don't think that tolerance is always going to be there. Um, 
when you first start taking it with no tolerance whatsoever, um, or even if you just haven't taken it for a, for a few days, weeks, months, um, start with, if you've never taken it before, 30 milligrams. If you have taken it before, don't go over the, sort of st stick with the 60 milligrams. Um, for your second dose of the evening, maybe maybe push it to the 80, 90, 100 milligrams for the second dose of the evening. Um, no matter how much tolerance you've got, your absolute upper limit, I wouldn't even bother taking it there, but your upper limit is 300 milligrams. If you go over 300 milligrams, you are pushing it into the dangerous territory. If you hit 400 milligrams, you're talking death. It's not, there's no point in pushing it that far, and there's certainly no point in pushing it that far when, is, as accurate as this is, it's not 100 and 10% accurate. There, there, is, there is a little bit of room for error. Um, so if you say never go over 300 milligrams, um, and as a first dose, certainly never go over 100 milligrams, that, that is your absolute upper limit. Um, don't go storing 1,000 milligrams of codeine in one bottle sitting in the fridge unlabeled that someone could come along and take a, 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 a swig of. Um, that person could be allergic to it. Label it up. The police aren't going to come uh, and bust your door through for no apparent reason. Don't be concerned about having codeine labeled up in your fridge. Um, better safe than sorry. So please just be safe. Don't do not do this stuff um, willy-nilly uh, and just start taking it like it's some sort of joke. You have to remember that this stuff can kill you. Um, and, and we're not talking kill you if you take stupid amounts. We're talking it can kill you well within these two packets. If I take these two packets without the paracetamol, let alone with the paracetamol, if I, take, if I extract this and take the whole lot in one go, I will be in hospital. I may be lucky to live. The chances are I wouldn't live. Please, please just be safe. Measure it out beforehand. Prepare it. Measure it out. Make sure you know exactly how many milligrams is in how many milliliters that you are drinking.